Hey, good day. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Thank you for dropping in today, spending a little bit of your time with us. We hope that we're able to give you just a little bit of encouragement along the way, a little information from the Word of God and from some life experience that uh, maybe you can take away and from the podcast and use it for the glory of God in your own personal life. As you can see, uh, again, this is episode four. We're dealing with uh, the subject of New Testament church discipline, and we have had uh, my, my son-in-law and a dear friend, Brother Josh Russell, pastor of the Lighthouse Baptist Church, with us over the last Amen. three weeks and now the fourth week. And always our steady man, whether he's behind the camera, setting up our technological wizardry or whether he is... Uh, giving us deep and rich truths from the Word of God, our mascot, Mr. <laughs> Dr. Sir Hurricane Matthew <laughs> Tucker. How you doing, Dr. Tucker? I'm doing good. How you doing? You know, I've never felt better than had less. Yeah, I can, I can yeah. concur. I've felt better than I've had less, but not all at the same time like Not this. all at the same time? <laughs> well, I agree with you, whatever you say. Well, you know, most people agree with me with whatever I say, God blesses them people. Amen. God blesses them. Amen. What's what you drinking over there? Me? Mm -hmm. I'm drinking some um, uh, Walmart brand, great value, K-cup coffee, but this is in Caramel the cream? Caramel cream. That's, you, what, I, that's oh, what I've drunk. I'm sweating. sucking on that, too. It's in my sweat beating up my hand. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm good sweat. stuff, ain't it's it? Good. Yeah. In my sweat. I, I'm serious. Do you, I, I, I'm a connoisseur of good coffee. All y'all know that. But that stuff ain't bad. No, that's why I got me a cup. You mentioned it last week you know, about you been drinking the Walmart. And so I snuck up to the K-Cups and got me one. You like it? I like it. Amen. Amen. You need to tell your daddy about it. But I don't want to get him. I mean, he's still blonde in it, isn't he? No, he's in, he's in, he's, he's like the, he's like the, I think he's drinking the McCa Mac, Maca, uh, the McDonald's coffee. It McCafe? Is, the breakfast McCafe? Mm -hmm. The breakfast blend. What's wrong with him? Oh, he makes a pretty good pot of coffee. I've been drinking some. Do he? He, 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 he brews. I mean, he he brews. Brews. He's, a, he's a Jewish guy. He's Hebrews. a Jewish guy, yeah. Amen. Well, we love coffee, as all y'all know. Send us some coffee in and say, well, I'll just send you a Walmart gift card. Well, I may or may not buy coffee with it, so send it in. Brother Josh ain't drinking no coffee. Yeah, he's... Boy, ain't got no hair on his chest. He, um, if, he, if he drinks some coffee, he might get a beard or something. That's right. That's right. What does mama in law say about the beer earlier? His, his mom in law. <laughs> she I mean, know what it, to think. She don't like it, but she don't like him. I mean, so. <laughs> it's another dead. change. Double and whammy. Unchanged. Double whammy. And unchanged. Double whammy. I've been she married. She didn't notice me at first. That's what I was going for, so she wouldn't see me. Yeah. yeah. And then when she recognized you, what was her first, you know. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> was she talking about the beard or was she talking about you? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, you just have to know my precious wife. Yeah. Precious. I'm Bless still trying heart. to convince myself of that. So <laughs> I've got a good wife. Hey, she came in a while ago and brought a bag her. of coffee a while ago. She did. Yeah. Yeah. I seen it. She that. brought me some coffee. She I did. mean, she did. She did. Yeah. It's like I said a moment ago, I have a precious wife. Hey, Amen. Man. Just ask her. She'll tell you. Will she? Yeah. She will. Yeah. We need to get her on and let her tell some stories. You she know, got some stories. I'm tell. not sure we can handle it. <laughs> Yeah, Women in Ministry, that's we, a great podcast. I'm my wife said, I said, you need to come on the podcast and be on here. We'll, we'll have some pastor's wives around the table. And she said, nope, you don't want me on there. I said, why is that? She said, you'll make fun of me. I said, I'll make fun of you anyway. I said, so you know, it shouldn't be anything new. Well, we'll let her run the show. She can sit in the chair. That's right. But again, she said, y'all can't take it. We can't. And that's what she said. And I believe her. Right. I mean, that woman... I'm not kidding when I say this. She believes it straight, friend, mm -hmm. or straight, straight, mm -hmm. and she's right, Miss Stephanie. Yep, it's great. Yeah. She's uh, she runs a tight ship too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you are the benefactor of a good mother yes, to her children. You're correct. And uh, your wife's doing that. a good job with yes. your children. She is. You got a you got a precious. Precious, precious jewel when you Amen. got Sarah. Amen. I believe that. He come wanting to marry Sarah. I said, you think, I don't even know you. You think I'm going to give you something I've put all my life in, just give her to you? That's your mind, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so so we got oh, a great relationship fun today. Yeah. He hated me back in, but you know, we like each other now. Yeah, we actually do. A little bit. That's, little little bit. Good. That's good. Yeah, a little bit. If we have to admit it. Yeah, well, we're, you know, we're on... 
We're on uh, what we call this podcast TV. TV. Live, we on live television. Live he television. Said a show this is a show. Week. We're on the we show. We got a live studio audience over here. We do today. <laughs> we, we do. The other day you said, "What does our live studio audience say?" And it was dead, dead silence. silence and then, crickets. Yeah, but now we've got we've actually got a live studio audience, we and we thank all of you who have gathered out there uh, to uh, watch the filming of the podcast. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, what are we talking about today, Joshua? Still on church discipline. Hey, uh, last week when we ended this thing, and this is this is, I think Matthew's a little tired of this. He's afraid we're going to discipline him off the program. <laughs> Are you a little tired of it? Not tired of it. No, I'm good. I'm just you're just tired. I'm hot. You got to cut the air conditioner on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're hot. I'm hot. They're trying to save money. Uh, I'm sorry, man. It's I mean, right. we got the, the fans on. Yeah, it's on low. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm good. I'm ready to go. I'm sorry. I didn't no, mean to make it. you comfortable. No, I mean, it's uncomfortable. Right. I just, I'm always uncomfortable on live television. I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cable access. I think it gets, gets you nervous. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to. No. I, I, mean, I really do put a lot of stock in, you know, you helping me. Being, I, enjoy, I, mean, I enjoy it. You're more faithful than the other guys. I know they ain't never here, are they? No. Oh. But who's got more seniority? You do now. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, you do. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, you... Yeah, on on the mm. you know, so we're going to church discipline the higher ground podcast. I think we ought hey, to man. we ought to do it. There you go. Put put them on watch care. We get to pick right according to what we've been dealing with. It's up to us what we decide to punish. <laughs> That's <laughs> right? exactly right. Okay, that is exactly. So, so what we can bind or lose it. What y'all want to do? What are we going to lose on them? What you want to lose on? Them? What you I think? don't know. No, I don't have no seniority. I'm going to stay out of this one. I think we need. What's to, that we need to do? I think we need to lose. Do we need to lose the wrath. The wrath. The rocks. The wrath of Crystal Aldridge on both of them. Oh my! Mm. Well, I got him. I got him in trouble. We was down there on one night, and I went to Bible college. I went to Bible college with him, and we was in there. And I just we was walking the next day, and I made mention of something that he said uh, during the during the uh, college class, and Miss Crystal got upset about it. I mean, like forevermore, really kind of. They had to call. They had to call Brother Feeney, and guess whose side Brother Feeney took? The Crystal Aldridge. It's Crystal Aldridge. And I told her, I saw her, Reb. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. So, yeah, un- un- release it. Can, can you reveal this, or is this like a ancient Chinese secret, huh? Well, I don't want to get nothing started. You know, I don't like to stir, stir up trouble. You're the one that gave us the hors d'oeuvre. Yeah, but I had to, do, <laughs> you know, it's just something to do with the book of Corinthians. He was in the book of Corinthians. I think it's chapter 7. Oh, uh, so, oh, I know about that <laughs> yeah, chapter. So you know about that chapter. So it's yeah. something to do with that text. And, yeah. And so we got all these boys in the college class and all. So you kind of kind of figure what yeah, we ain't talking about. No do benevolence and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no such and all the things. Mm-hmm. We ain't gonna mm-hmm. talk about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We on church discipline. Yes, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he deserves it. I don't. Care. I'm out. <laughs> Everything's good. Yeah. Lord's good. That was good. And his sister. <laughs> that's what, saying, that's what Matthew said. <laughs> said, what about the devil, Matthew? The, and his sister. <laughs> they all good. They all good. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, well, so we were in 16 of uh, Romans, and we are talking about the marking and avoiding part. Yeah. And you and I were discussing, Brother Josh, the, the aspect of uh, others Paul had dealt with, yeah. like in Thessalonica that he spoke about, uh, he spoke about some to Timothy. Uh, throw a little, throw, throw some of those verses out. So, Second Thessalonians three six, it says, "Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which ye received of us." Right. That's one. Okay. So here's what he is saying. He is saying. Again, like contrary to doctrine, Correct. he said, "You've received tradition." And how how often, Matthew, have you heard the the crowd that's going left of center today? Okay, how often have you ta- heard them use the terminology? Y'all are just serving tradition. Y'all are just serving tradition. Mm-hmm. A lot. Okay. So what did he say there? He said, "Not after the tradition which you received of us." Okay. So Paul said. I have laid a tradition Mm -hmm. down for your Christian life. Yep. Okay? The argument would be, well, the tradition is based on the Word of God. Well, much of what they're rejecting is based on the Word of God. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he said, what are they to do to them people? 
You should withdraw yourself from every brother that does that. Okay, so it boils down to chapter 16 again. Mm -hmm. Mark and avoid yep. those that cause division and those that are walking disorderly. contrary and disorderly mm -hmm. to the tradition they receive. Now, talks what is about immorality? Right. Now, what does the word disorderly mean? Do you know? It's just talking about immorality, a lifestyle. We, we, we talked about it before yeah. was out of the ranks. Out of the ranks, yes, one yes. definition. Not marching lockstep mm -hmm. with everybody else. You know, yeah. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord, right. and we're never going to accomplish anything if we are not marching in the same direction Correct. to the beat of the same drum. Mm -hmm. right. So It inhibits progress. Which means there's some people that do not belong in... In our churches, there's some people that don't belong in your church. Mm -hmm. uh, if if they can't be lockstepped with the direction you're going, and they're more, they want to be more than just an attender. You know, there's some people that attend the church mm -hmm. that maybe the truth can help. But if these are people that are going to buck the direction that the church, by and large, is going, yeah. they need to go elsewhere. Yeah. Right. Or they're eventually going to find themselves under church discipline somewhere down the yeah. line. The next verse would be, oh, was, was it Titus oh. or Timothy? Yeah. You have uh, Titus 3.10. Okay. And he says, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he... That is such is subverted and sinneth, mm -hmm. being condemned of himself. Okay, so in this verse of scripture, here's what he said. So you've got a heretic. Mm -hmm. So what is a heretic? It's someone who is preaching fallacy or error. All right, they're doctrine. believing fallacy. They're believing yeah. error, and they're they're prompting it or promoting yeah. it. And so, the word can also mean schism. Right. They're causing division. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what was it? Um, what was it he said to do to those people? Mark them and avoid them. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what do you got to do to them first? First admonition. Okay. So not only the first admonition. Second. Right. So mm -hmm. what is he telling us to do? You got to go to them twice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what is an admonition? So it's going to be a charge. It's going to be an exhortation or a correction. Right. So in, in this, the word admonition, in its strictest definition, just means to bring attention to, mm -hmm. okay? Or to, re, the, re, the word rebuke is the definition. Mm -hmm. But it's not talking about a forcible rebuke. Mm -hmm. It's talking about an instructional rebuke. Mm -hmm. a, a matter of fact, the word mild is used. Mm -hmm. So a mild rebuke is given to these individuals after they've been given that first and second admonition for being heretical. Now, the word heretic or to be heretical means exactly what you said, to create a schism. Mm -hmm. Now, schism is basically something that's not fitted for the body as, as a whole. Yeah. Uh, how would I best describe it or define it? So you, you've got, a, you've got a, a body that God has put together. In this body, someone takes and inserts through the knee mm -hmm. a nail or a needle through the joint of the knee, and you continue to try to operate. You have all the parts. You have all the ability within you to do this, but because there is a schism within the joint or something that doesn't belong there, yeah. then it, it causes uh, abnormality in the movement. Yeah. So it's the same thing with a heretic. A heretic is causing a schism or abnormality in the movement of the church. Yep. So he did not say just because they they're, they're not that they believe something that's wrong, he is not saying that you automatically throw them out. So what am I to do, Matthew? So I'm to give them an admonition. How many times? Three. All right. Two for sure. Two for sure. First. He said Probably. first, second. And then the third one, bring them for the congregation. Is that right. Correct? Well, that would be Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. But in a doctrinal issue like Ty, mm -hmm. Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy yeah. chapter 3, or Titus chapter 3, verse 10, he said after you've gone to them the second time, you're to reject them. Okay? Reject them. So years ago, you and I had a friend, and there was a, he, was, he was really um, blowing out the, the work of another individual who was who had written some heretical doctrine okay in a published work and so I was in the office with him and 
this particular individual had called him and said, I understand that you are disapproving of the, of the work that I've done. And he said, yeah, I believe you're a heretic. He said, so can I sit down with you and can we talk this through? Can, can I buy you lunch and can we talk this through? And he said, absolutely not. I wouldn't sit down and eat, eat anything with you. And he slammed the phone down his ear. Mm-hmm. To which I responded to the preacher. I said, man, you've, you've talked about him all over the country. The least you can do is sit down with him and talk to him. Yeah. And he said this, a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject him. I said, well, you've not given him the first admonition, let mm-hmm. alone the second. No, not personally. So this is something that is to be followed in regard to church discipline. Yeah. So uh, is there, are there any more verses that you thought of? Uh, only thing you have left is regarding some, I think, elders in 1 Timothy 5. And it says, Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Preachers aren't above right. church discipline. Right. Well, that, that is, um, you know that, we've talked about that, Matthew, where, where he does talk about the, the verse that Josh brought up was that those that sin before all rebuke, openly rebuke them that others yes, may fear. And that's not talking about a, a church discipline situation mm-hmm. with the average Joe mm-hmm. Blow church member. That is talking about men who have surrendered themselves to the yep. ministry of the Lord right. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. This is talking about preachers. Yep. And he said, if you got a preacher that gets wrong, he said, you're to rebuke that preacher before the congregation yep. and before other preachers. He is to be rebuked openly yep. so that others may fear. Not just the average church member. Right. This is dealing with yep. the clergy. Yes. This is dealing with those who are involved in ministry. Yep. Okay? So, all right. So, let's talk about... Let's talk about um, restoration, okay? So we've church disciplined somebody, and now we want to restore them. We're at Galatians chapter 6. Have you had that opportunity to restore someone after a church disciplinary situation? No, sir. Okay. Most people, once they're dealt with in discipline, most people will not stay around long enough to follow through on what the Word of God says. I've had a few along the way that God's helped. Uh, but a lot of people will, because of pride, mm-hmm. just leave the church altogether yes, instead yes, of dealing with yeah. the yeah. disciplinary action of the church in their life. Yeah. As a result, not by and large, every time yeah. a person that refuses true biblical discipline in their life from the church, when the church has a heart not to hurt them but to heal them, mm-hmm. Every mm-hmm. time those people have wound up in my in my life, okay, yes, sir. they've wound up dying premature deaths, or they have wound up losing everything. Mm-hmm. Their family goes to the dogs. I mean, it, it's bad. Yeah. Okay, I, do, I have had a gentleman that I have I have to dealt with far as it didn't have to go as far as church discipline, but we there was some issues that were brought to my attention. Uh, from some other folks that I've had to sit down with this individual and talk with, and this individual did take correction well. Mm-hmm. And uh, this matter of fact, this individual uh, actually, when I first started passion, this individual had a desire to do something, but was never able or qualified to do anything because of the life that he lived. And so when I was confronted uh, with some of the issues, I dealt with him on it and began to deal with him. And it, about, it took about two years. But after that two years, me and him talking one another and him taking correction, I mean, it went even it went even further uh, to some of the stuff that he read and some of the literature that he had, some folks mm-hmm. that he read behind. He would say stuff and make statements that was contrary to what we believed, and I would have to counsel with him on it because he would bring it to church and try to pass it out to some right. of our folks. And so I counseled with him, and he took correction well. Yep. And now the guy, I'm able to use the guy because he took the time to counsel, and he adhered to the correction, yep. and he actually... Actually, so I guess I should answer the question. Yes, well, that's a rarity. Yeah, it's a rarity. I mean, Absolutely. and of course, you're you're dealing with um, you're dealing with a guy who is being sucked into uh, you you know heresy. He's not someone that's. I mean, he was he was of a sincere. He was sincere. sincere. Yes, sir. I mean, he he wasn't trying to Serve as outright right. destroy. Right. His, yeah, right. Yeah. And he he's just that, that's a different animal yeah. uh, than most church discipline type right. situations. But even there, pride becomes such a big deal. A lot of folks won't. They just simply right. won't get right with right. God. They won't. Uh, 
but let's say they do, okay? So read for me verse number one there, Brother Matthew, chapter six. But if, but if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, mm. considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So would you say, would you, would you say that, that for me to try to restore someone is biblical? Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. So for me to restore them is biblical, and what would be the reasoning why I should restore them? <clears throat> well, you're commanded to, one. Amen. Number Secondly, one. Secondly, you are wanting to do that because you love the church, because you're saved. Number two. And thirdly is for the unity of the church, right. and then for our testimony for the lost and dying world. And finally, in the text, huh? the considering there, yourself. There is a yeah. consideration mm-hmm. yes, to, be, to be engaged here yeah. because, mm-hmm. I mean, this could be me. I mean, yes, it's if if I get put in the wrong situation yep. at the right time or the right situation at the wrong time, you can I, I could be the person who's being yes, decided. Is that word considering the same scope word as what we dealt with? I don't know, but I'll let you know here in a half. I'll second. say this while you're Go looking ahead. at it. It says, if a man. This, right. this shouldn't have to be a ministry we're always yeah. dealing in. Uh, and we're not. We're not, for, right. because most people ain't going to deal with it. But, you know, if you follow through with those church disciplines yes. of uh, construction and you follow through with those personal uh, church disciplines and, and serving God yourself yeah. and following the Lord yourself personally, these things are very avoidable. Right. They are. Um, but it takes, it takes doctrine. Mm-hmm. It takes unity. And it takes a church being very careful and serious yeah. about the purity of their church. Absolutely. And it takes a group of people who are willing to do that. And here's what I found. When a, ser- a church really gets serious about not entertaining, but they're serious about honoring God, that church does not grow numerically overnight. Hmm. It will grow slowly, yeah. very slowly, but it grows with the right kind yes. of people. And then you're going to have Satan try to sow tares in that kind of church, mm-hmm. and they're going to have to deal with that. Yep. You know, stunted growth because of the tares that are there. So in verse number two, I'm to bear what? Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. All right, so just as Christ bore my burden yep. on Calvary, I am to bear the burden of an individual who has sinned against God, which means there is an element of condemnation when I sin against God as a saved man that I have to bear. Yes, sir. You know, that Romans 8, 1, there's therefore now no condemnation in which you're in Christ Jesus who won't not have the flesh but have the spirit. You have to remember the condemnation is... It, it, it is not saying that that there is never any condemnation that you're ever going to have right. to feel again just because you're saved. It is saying there is no condemnation if you walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Mm-hmm. So if I'm walking after the flesh, there is some condemnation I'm going to feel. So my job is to bear the burden, help that individual bear the burden of that. Yeah. So the next verse, which is verse number 3. For if a man thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Okay, so it gets back to the fact that in church discipline and the element of restoration, I again have to consider myself lest I also be tempted. This really could be me. So he's reiterated this in verse number one and verse number three, that this could be you. And so if if I approach it by thinking, man, this could be me somebody's having to help. If I approach it that way, then I'm going to be tender. I'm going to be gentle, mm-hmm. merciful, gracious, and kind yes, sir. with the individual that I'm restoring. So verse number four says, But let every man prove his own work, and let and, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Okay, so I, I can't do all the work here. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I'm restoring an individual then that man or woman, for the, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. if it's a lady restoring a lady in the church, a man restoring a man, that individual has a burden of responsibility on themselves, not just to come to church, but to improve and to, uh, and to re, through reproof, to improve their life so that their life then proves to everyone that they've made strides to get right with God. It's not just a matter of coming to church and sitting down on the pew and being quiet until Jesus comes. Right. Okay, So I've got to prove that individual in real restoration 
is doing an outward work that the church as a whole can look at and say, and you're making progress, yeah. Yeah. getting right with God. So the next verse is... Verse, for, verse 5. Right. For yeah. every man shall bear his own burden. All right. So I'm bearing his burden and helping to fulfill the law of Christ, but I can't pull this train all by myself. Mm-hmm. They've, they're going to have responsibility yes, here too. Yes, okay. Yes, so next... Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Okay, so verse number six teaches us how we are to to um, restore a man. Okay, so let him that is taught in the word, which is the individual being being restored, um, they're being taught by the person who is helping to bear their burden. They're being taught. By the word of God, let him that is taught in the word communicate back. He's communicating back to him that is teaching him in all good things. Now, the word communicate here means to be a partaker of or to be made into something. It means to share or to distribute back. So basically what it's saying is they are partaking of the instruction from the word of God. And then they're sharing it through life experience that that word of God is doing its job to restore that individual. So the next verse is, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay, so he's not talking about, so you bunch of sinners, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's not what he's talking about. The person he's speaking to is the person who is restoring Mm -hmm. the fallen brother. So he is saying, you who are restoring the fallen brother, don't you be deceived. God's not a mocked God. Mm. Whatever you sow in restoring a fallen brother, whatever you sow, that's what you get back. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then he says this, and the reason we know this is because of the next verses, the next two verses. He said, for he that soweth to his flesh. In other words, if I use fleshly means in restoring a fallen brother, then that's what I get back. I get fleshly yep. means and, and fleshly fruit, and it doesn't work. He said, but if you sow to the Spirit, you will of the Spirit reap that man's life everlasting. So then the next thing that he says is this, and this is how, why we know that that's true. He said, let us not be weary in well-doing. Well, what's the well-doing that we're doing in this text, Josh? Restoring. Okay. So to restore somebody is tough. Yes, Yes, sir. He said, don't you get tired doing that. Mm -hmm. Don't you get tired. Don't get weary in the well-doing of restoring a fallen brother because you will reap if you don't faint. Right. If you'll stay with it, you'll reap that brother back. And then the final verse, verse 10, said this, and we're going to stop here today. He said, as you have opportunity, you do good in restoration. You do good to all men, but particularly. The household of faith. That's exactly right. Hey, it's been a good series. I have enjoyed you guys walking through here with me. Hey, thank you. Thank you for being with us. And, hey, keep pressing on the upward way. Have a great week in the Lord. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next week.